Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. Yeah, you know it's that time of year. You got the shills and the bootlicks who, after years of having hidden, at least since 2020, now they're suddenly crawling out of the woodwork, and they seem to have this little phrase that they want to be using more than any other, Project 2025. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, well, basically, you've probably seen Rachel Maddow prattling on about it day after day after day, and the rest of the folks at MSNBC. Basically, they're touting this as the Republicans' master plan to essentially take over America. All they got to do is get Donald Trump reelected as president, and apparently he's going to abolish Congress. He's going to declare himself a super branch of government and just say, I'm in charge. Everybody's fired except for me. That's essentially the gist of it. And of course, along the way, they're going to also be targeting anyone who they don't like, like ethnic minorities. Though the truth of the matter is, from the perspective of black Americans, you wouldn't really even notice the difference. Now, it was Brother Malcolm who informed you that if you want to find a sellout, just look and see if he says we whenever talking about Massa. Whenever Massa says we, he says we too. Whenever you got somebody who says something like, oh, I don't know, Trump will end our democracy. That you're talking to one of these shills, you're talking to one of these sellouts. When in all of the existence of this country have black Americans ever experienced anything even resembling democracy? Tell me the year when black Americans enjoyed democracy in this country. Because if you're going to sit here and say our democracy, I want to know when black Americans actually had equality in this country and actually experienced democracy. I'll wait for that answer and wait and wait. See, I warned you about some of these pathetic wannabe talented 10th folks. These are the butter biscuit begging sellouts who white power sets up and props up to come among us and give us the old line. They're out there saying, you gots to votes. Now, they can't tell you what you're going to get from the Democrats. They also can't tell you what the Democrats have done to push back against all of these white nationalist laws from the Republicans. I can point to an Asian hate crime law and a gay marriage law and Democrats organizing themselves to put abortion laws on the state and red states. See, whenever these non-black groups have the Republicans do something that they don't like, the Democrats respond with policy. They respond with action. Black people, on the other hand, all they do is tell us what they can't do. Be careful about these plants out here, idiots who you never heard of, who keep company with the exact same people we're fighting against. Whenever you see some clown out there pushing that black folks needs to votes no matter what, every vote matters. 97% of the time, that person's some old boomer sellout who's either some boule stooge or mobbed up with one of these do-nothing Greek frats or sororities and they're selling the soap for massa. Keep in mind, Byron Allen had his A-dunce clowns telling us all that if he didn't win his little lawsuit, then black folks would lose what few quote-unquote rights we have, and it would be back to the cotton fields for us. Well, he didn't win his suit. He had to go another route, and last time I checked, nothing changed for us. Though the folks who were out there cheerleading for him, their status changed. They went from being his buddies to just being on the outs. They can't even get the phone calls returned. I guess that's why they're not cheerleading for him anymore. You need to learn to recognize when some shill's running game on you. Black America had nothing at stake in Byron Allen's lawsuit. The only person who would benefit from it is the same person who always benefited from his lawsuits, Byron Allen. And the same goes for these old wrinkled up boomer fossils. They can't understand why nobody respects them, so they take shots at the people who are respected. These are the fools who have the local NAACP on speed dial. Check these bootlicks out sometime. Have you ever seen them criticizing these do-nothing groups like the NAACP, the Urban League, the National Action Network, or Big Bird and his pitiful little gang over there at NCOBRA? They are the pals of these people. And that's why they're out here trying to see if there's any Negroes who will listen to them. They might find a few, but only the stupid ones. We have a problem when it comes to black political discourse. For over a hundred years, we've had this rump contingent of self-interested con men and con women who have tried to use every push for social justice we've ever mounted as nothing more than a springboard to a life of comfort and wealth for themselves. These people use us as their power base so that they can do some clout chasing. It's been going on since at least Reconstruction. So when you see these DNC mouthpieces out here, you need to ask yourself if the person talking to you is mobbed up with a certain political party and trying to finesse themselves a better position in that party. When you see people who are trying to raise their own profile, it's obvious. Now, I won't do all your homework for you, but just ask a few common sense questions. Four years ago, Joy Reid went on her show and said anyone talking about reparations is a Russian bot. She didn't talk to us. She chose instead to talk about us, and she didn't have anything good to say. That was four years ago. A lot of black people went for that line that Trump was simply too dangerous to be in office, and anyone who is being critical of Joe Biden, well, they must be Russian disinformation. You gotta vote for Biden. But why? 
Biden didn't promise us anything. And there's absolutely no evidence whatsoever that he was going to either do anything for us or try to undo any of the policy harms that have been enacted against us. We in the black media pointed this pig's simple fact out, that Biden wasn't promising to do anything for black people and that he wouldn't unless we showed we could punish the Democrats for not stepping up with our tangibles or any sort of policy benefits for us. Instead, people fell for scare talk that if Trump was reelected, then we'd be back in the plantations the next day. Look. There's more conscientious people who are ready to get turned up if the conservatives try to do something really stupid than not. Just keep in mind, the only reason we're finally seeing the police being charged for the murders that they've been committing is because of the uprisings of 2020. It wasn't because any elections were held. Things were changing before the November elections of 2020. It wasn't because anybody was put in office. It was because people showed that they would take things into their own hands. The streets were talking. Not a single law was passed to eliminate qualified immunity, and I'm talking about Democrats here. Democrats did nothing to punish the police. In fact, when Biden became president, he did the most to be all chummy-chummy with the cops, and he said that COVID money needed to go to police departments instead, with no strings attached. So, rather than use the federal government's power of the purse to force these cities and counties to hold these criminals accountable and punish them— Biden went in the opposite direction and said to give the crooks with badges more money and don't force them to make any changes in order to get it. Sonia Massey was murdered on Joe Biden's watch by a thug with a badge who bounced between six different police departments in only four years. Now refresh my memory, but didn't Biden promise black people that he would create a White House level police accountability commission and part of their job would be to track and deal with cops like this? That was four years ago when he made that bogus promise. So whatever became of it, he went back on it the second he was elected. That's what he did. When the police went to court because they didn't want to be held civilly liable for depriving people of their Miranda rights, Joe Biden personally sent his solicitor general to the Supreme Court to argue on behalf of the police. So Joe Biden was totally hands-on to back the badge and to make it where they have basically civil immunity for deliberately not Mirandizing people. Biden did that, not Trump. So when you hear people pointing out that Donald Trump says that he's going to back the badge and give them immunity left, right, and center, he's just saying out loud what Biden has been doing all along. When you say Trump is going to give the police immunity from law, I say, oh, you mean like Biden's been doing? Because that's the reality. But some folks are simply too dense to recognize continuity of policy when they see it. When it comes to Republicans and Democrats, we see that the similarities far outweigh the differences. And when it comes to black people, there is total continuity of policy. The policies and rules that the Republicans put in place are no different than what the Democrats put in place. When the Republicans put stuff on the books, the Democrats allow it to stay there. They don't try to overturn it or repeal it or get rid of it, like they do say when there's a gay marriage ban or the Supreme Court decides to overturn Roe v. Wade. And what has Kamala Harris been doing while all this is going on? See, we have a lot of smart, dumb people in the black community, people who think that repeating stupidity somehow makes them seem smart, people who specialize in doing scare talk because when people are afraid, they stop asking so many questions. If you're a con man or a shill working for con men, that's what you want. Scared people who will simply obey and not ask any questions. We went for a line of scare talk four years ago. How'd that work out for us? Kamala Harris was on the campaign trail saying she's opposed to reparations. Biden chose to make her his running mate, and since she's been in the White House, has she changed her tune on that issue even one iota? Asians got a hate crime law, gays got a gay marriage law, Biden's aggressively pushing a policy to give illegal alien citizenship, and they're trying to legalize abortion in every red state, so they're working hard to produce for everyone, except the so-called base of the party. And even after all this, at this late date, you still have bootlicks out there telling you why you have to vote for Kamala Harris. Or Trump will be worse. I asked the same question I asked four years ago. Look at Biden's record and please show me what you're afraid Trump is going to do that Biden hasn't been doing all along. Using legislation to target black people, Biden weaponized the legislature against us decades ago, back in the 1980s. And he hasn't done even one thing to use legislation to benefit black people. So where black people are concerned, laws can only specifically be used to target us or prosecute us or deprive us of our rights or opportunities. But at no point has Biden ever acknowledged what he did or pledged to use laws to make reparations for his crimes against us. None of these politicians do that. When black folks started getting on Bill Clinton's case when Hillary was running for the White House and reminding him about the 94 crime bill, Bill Clinton took no responsibility. He said, well, those black preachers, those, those black preachers, they're the ones who were behind. You know, I had to do it because of what they said, those black preachers. 
See, what's really at stake here is whether the white leftists and their black bootleg followers will get to keep having ready access to the federal money and power that they currently enjoy. That's the only crisis going on. That's why they're scared, and they want you to be scared too. And that's the reason why they're kicking around this phrase, Project 2025. Most of you have already heard of it, and I'm not going to give a rundown of a point-by-point -point breakdown of it. But the point of the matter is this. The white right has been out there planning their glorious white ethno state for the longest time. We can be disgusted by things like this, but stop acting like you're surprised. There's nothing new here. This is part of a decades-long ongoing scheme by the white right, and it's gone by a number of different names. The Contract with America, the Project for a New American Century, and now Project 2025. The names change, but the ideas remain the same. The problem isn't that the white right is pushing yet another mad scheme. The problem is your so-called Democrats have done nothing to stop them, and they haven't done anything in decades. This despite having been in the White House 20 out of the last 30 years. Republicans put all these racist laws on the books, and Democrats never do anything about it. Even when black people put them back in control of the government, they don't repeal anything. They don't roll back anything. They don't make it a point to pass laws meant to promote our power and to make sure Republicans can't weaponize legislation against us. There's no political retaliation by the Democrats on our behalf. They just get themselves elected and then immediately begin taking care of everyone else except us. And that's the problem. They've controlled the House and the Senate numerous times during the last 20 years. So what have the Democrats been doing for black Americans? See, these smart, dumb Negroes out here shilling for the Democrats, they hate the black media because we want you to keep score. But all the shills want you to do is to keep scared. When you see them pushing their talking points, bringing up the things I mentioned, you make sure to bring up the ton of broken promises Biden made. Bring up how he supported the police instead of working to punish them. When Democrats cozy up with the cops, the Sean Graysons of this world see that, and they correctly understand that Biden's on their side. That's the reason why the feds aren't doing anything about them. Please name for me how many times the Biden administration has gone after the police. I'll wait. Supporting the police only emboldens these criminals with badges. You want to stop the next murder of Asanya Massey? Then you have to punish Sean Grayson, harshly, and make it a point to punish his co-workers the instant they step out of line. All of these criminal cops could be stopped long before they actually kill someone, but the decision has been made not to do anything until after they kill and even then try to protect them as much as possible. They've already worked that into their mental calculus. Okay, we know that occasionally these guys are going to do something egregious enough where it gets the public's attention and there's going to be public outrage, but let's go ahead and see how much of a lid we can keep on it regardless. You cannot reform these white supremacists. You can only punish them. But Biden won't even do that. And if you listen to these bootlicks online, you'll notice they also have no criticism of the Jim Clyburns either. Clyburn said to stop talking about defunding the police. Make these Democrat shills defend that. They have to defend it, or they have to admit that Clyburn's wrong and that they've been wrong for supporting him. Elections are supposed to be transactional, quid pro quo, something for something. Well, we've had enough of the IOUs. When we vote for the Democrats and tell them that they have to produce for us, they always tell us, uh, we can't do anything for you because we have to get reelected. So you got to wait until the next election and maybe we can do something for you then. And then when the next election comes, we vote for them and they say, well, we have to hold on to the White House or we have to hold on to this or that Senate seat. So we still can't do anything for you. But if you help us gain some more seats in the House or the Senate, maybe then we can do something. So we help them gain more seats and they claim the GOP stonewalling them and they're scared of losing white suburban women and Trump's too dangerous. And what about Ron DeSantis or Jeff Landry, etc.? It's a treadmill to nowhere because that was their plan for the very beginning. Well, we're not taking any more IOUs. Everyone else gets tangibles and policies for themselves. We get excuses, lies, and we get ordered to go and vote. Everyone else, they talk to them politely, and they beg for these other constituencies' votes. They beg for the votes of people who don't even vote for them. But when they come to black people, they openly insult us. Biden says, you're not black if you don't vote for him. Obama says, he'll consider it a personal insult if you don't vote for Hillary. They talk to us like we're galley slaves. Now, how is that any different than Trump saying, look at my blacks over here? The answer, it's not. But these Democrat shills don't dare talk about that. Forget it. We have to change the political calculus. Right now, they know we'll sit out one election. But since we blinked in 2020, they're betting that we can be terrified back into political submission because that's what happened four years ago. Now, for the sake of argument, 
Let's say that Project 2025 represents an unprecedented fascistic movement in America, that this is qualitatively different than any of the white rights racial agitation that's come before, and if this gang of right-wing reprobates seizes power this time, American democracy will go the way of the Weimar Republic. Okay, well here's my question then. If the situation is really that bad, and we're looking at a Fourth Reich that's about to take shape right here in America, then doesn't it make sense that Democrats should be willing to make any deal with black voters to keep that from happening? The problem isn't that America's on the precipice of falling into fascism. Even if you want to believe that, that's not the real problem. The Democrats could easily have enough votes to make it where the outcome is not in doubt. The dilemma for the Democrats is, they want to go ahead and have their power, and if you believe them, they want to stop this fascism from coming to power, but they don't want black people to actually get anything out of it. That's the dilemma that the Democrats are stuck on. That's the horns of the dilemma that they're stuck to. Democrats won't even make deals with black voters at the state or local levels. The problem here isn't that it's national policy, and hence very complicated to pull together. The problem is we have one political party who is full-on openly anti-black, and another one who's trying to con us into thinking they're not. We've heard all about Project 2025. I'd like to know, where is the Lift Every Voice plan from the Democrats, or the bridge to the 21st century? What was Obama's hope and change political platform? I want to know, what's the Democrats' political equivalent of Project 2025? What's their vision, their big idea, to remake America? There isn't one. The Democrats' entire party platform can be summed up in four words. We're not the Republicans. That's it. That's their plan. That's their big idea for why they should be in power, because they're not the Republicans. And this is why, even though on paper the voter base for the Republicans is smaller than it's ever been, nonetheless, Republicans control the disproportionate number of state houses, governorships, and seats in Congress. It only seems to change when Republicans overreach and do something so egregious and obnoxious that at least for one or two election cycles, voters get put out with them and throw them out. But notice that whenever this happens, it's not because Democrats actually promised voters anything. Trump got voted out, but what did Democrats promise to do if people voted for Biden? Nothing. They just said Trump needs to go. He's too dangerous. America needs to show the world that this isn't who we are. Slogans, not policies. Talk not tangibles. Democrats have retaken the Michigan state legislature because of black voters who mobilized in Detroit. But what did Governor Gretchen Whitmer or Biden or any other Democrat promise to do for those black Michiganders if they threw the Republicans out of power? Nothing. There were no carrots at all. This is the Democrats' plan. And if you shills, operatives, DNC plants, and suck-ups who lurk around here want to be angry about something, you can be angry about that. Democrats are hell-bound and determined to win elections, but they're even more determined to win without doing anything for black voters. You see, whenever the Democrats are running around doing all this scare talk, or whenever they have Republicans who are passing all of this fascistic legislation, they serve a very useful purpose for the white left, and that is, this is supposed to be the stick. This is how they're supposed to be scaring black folks to the polls. Look what all these Republicans are doing. You need to vote for us. Oh, look at all this stuff that they're doing. They're targeting black people. You need to vote for us. And don't ask for anything. Just the fact that we're going to be in there and there won't be quite so much of this stuff going on. That's the only thing you should be willing to settle for. That's the purpose that the white right serves under white supremacy. They are supposed to be providing some sort of credible threat or some sort of credible threatening action that's supposed to scare us into going ahead and voting for these other guys, regardless of the fact that they're not actually doing anything about it. They have allowed the white right to propose, pass, and enact all kinds of ridiculous laws. So what's the Democrats' legislative slate to dismantle what the GOP has done, what they've allowed the GOP to do? Where's their measures to punish Republicans for practicing their open, blatant anti-black racism and fascism? Why aren't Democrats identifying and targeting the aspects of conservatism and criminalizing them? Democrats know that on paper they potentially have far more voters than the GOP, but the Democrats serve the same corporate and social masters. The rhetoric is different, but when it comes time to push for the changes, Democrats don't push at all. Trying to scapegoat the black media is not going to work because black people have backed the Democrats for decades and we got nothing to show for it. The problem isn't that the white right's pushing hard as hell to institute fascism. The problem is that the alleged political opposition isn't pushing back at all. Everyone is trying to tell us to just obey. And the reason? Well, if you don't obey, it will be the end of everything. 
But for the people who might be quaking in their boots at the prospect of a second Trump term, or the ones who simply want to give the middle finger to the white right, my question to you is, why is it that black voters turning their backs on this crooked con game, why is it that that isn't the outcome that the Democrats are most terrified of? Why isn't producing for the base of the party their default position? All this arm wrestling and tug of war that we have to do forever and ever, that's not what a political party who's scared of fascism would do. This is what you do when producing for black voters is what you're really scared of. Look at these other groups. You would never see Jim Clyburn saying, Stop saying to give illegal aliens a path to citizenship. Stop sloganizing. You're going to cost us the election. He would never do that. You would never see Negro Jim Clyburn take a few minutes away from his sharecropper's farm long enough to say, Stop sloganizing all this transgender stuff. All of these transgender bathrooms. Y'all scaring them good white suburban women that we're trying to appeal to. This stuff is too weird for them. Stop sloganizing. Stop sloganizing. With all this trans rights as human rights, that's sloganizing. Sloganizing kills. He would never say that about anything LGBT related. And when it comes to abortion, same thing. They don't do that. Jim Clyburn would never be doing that mess. He would never say, we're trying to appeal to some of these Biden Republicans, some of these centrists who might be willing to sway over here due to certain social issues. So we can't be bringing up abortion. That's a hot button issue. Stop sloganizing. We're trying to appeal to some of these religious folks down south. You see, the absurd and often asinine demands that these other non-crucial constituencies make are never blamed as the reason for Democrats to lose an election. They never say, well, we can't do what you people want. It would kill us. It would cost us the election if we tried to do anything for the LGBT community. We can't do anything for all these legal aliens. Hell, they're not even citizens. They can't even vote. We can't be risking an election for people who don't even vote. We can't do that. Abortion? Oh, no. You're going to be scaring all of these religious folks. You're going to scare them straight to the polls. We don't want to galvanize the religious right, so we can't do anything for you. They never do that. Other people's demands are not treated as a politically radioactive issue. And you got to tell these other groups, stop making demands because it's too dangerous. There's no demand from any other constituency that's too dangerous to be part of the political discourse. But when black people even say the smallest thing, it's not feasible, you're going to be scaring people, politically radioactive, we don't want to be losing all of those white conservatives that we're trying to appeal to, that's what they do to us on everything. There's no excuse or no lie that's too flimsy or too pathetic or too blatantly false for them to try it as a reason why they don't have to do anything for black voters. And that being the case, you sound dumb as hell saying that we need to be doing stuff for them. It is not the responsibility of the voters to decide to do what the politicians want. It is the responsibility of the politicians to incentivize the voters to vote. And when you've been ignoring your political base for three generations now, when you've been giving them nothing but lies, insults, and excuses, if you claim that American democracy hangs by a thread, and you come to the very people who have not enjoyed democracy for even one day of this country's existence and tell them that they've got to take one for the team yet again, then pardon my saying, but you can take that line and you know where to shove it. You see, white folks love to be scared. That's why they like going to horror movies so much. They love to be scared of things. Being scared is thrilling for them. But the truth of the matter is, whether black folks like to admit it or not, for a lot of us, we suffer from the same malady when it comes to our political behavior. We like to be politically scared. We like to have some. we can go, oh my God, we's going to get in trouble. Too many black people enjoy being scared too, at least in the political arena they do. And that being the case, whatever boogeyman the white left puts forward and says you need to be scared of, they'll go right along with it. Because it's fun to say, oh, we're scared of what's the name. We're running for our lives and we're running straight to the polls and it's empty exercise, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. Well, you know what? This is real. It's not fake. Even if it's political theater, you shouldn't act like you're in a movie theater. This is not entertainment. And that being the case, if somebody's going to come up to you and tell you to be scared of Project 2025, why don't you ask them what the hell was going on in 1992 when Bill Clinton became president? How about Project 1994 crime bill? How about that one? In 1996, Bill Clinton won re-election. What did he do for black people? Democrats actually held on to seats in the middle of Clinton's impeachment. Then in 2000, when George Bush won the election, what was Al Gore's policy slate for black voters or John Kerry's or Barack Obama's? See, that's the political sleight of hand that's going on here. You got people out here, paid shills in many cases, who are telling you you need to be looking forward to what could happen next year. And I'm telling you to look backwards to what's already happened. Because based on the slate of candidates that white powers put in front of you, that is a far more accurate indicator of what you're actually going to get. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Antonio Daniels, Rhonda Hansom, Wally Balal, Sakina Collins, and Gregory Franklin. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.